better than I at road signs, because I don't even pay attention to the reading of the signs. Even on the waterways, you got to drive, or know where I'm going. I don't read the, sign, the road signs, and if you ask me where these different names are, I said, I don't know, but I, I drive them every day. I'm not very perceptive, but we should be with the times that we're living in. Praise God. Ezekiel 39 and verse 1. Let's all read together. Can we do that? Got to say amen. 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 Let's read together. Therefore, thou son of man. Let's read together. Ezekiel 39 verse 1. Therefore, thou son of man, cross the gates of God, and say, Thus says the Lord of God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. We're looking at Revelation, I mean, uh, Ezekiel 39, which is the revelation given to a man yeah. called Ezekiel. And I want you to keep in perspective here. Israel had been in, in, in bondage. In fact, the northern tribe of Israel in 721 B.C. were in captivity to the Assyrian, today modern Syria. They should be called Assyria. Now they're called Syria today. They drop the, the, the first letters of their name and they're called Syria today. But Assyria, overcome with Sennacherib, went in there and took those ten tribes and just killed a whole bunch of them and threw them out of the land. And because God was angry with, with uh, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, who caused Israel to sin. Now that that kingdom, which was a split kingdom, there were over 19 to 20 uh, kings and, uh, and reigned over them. And by the way, they all came to the power by the knives. Yes. Not one of them, except Jeroboam, came to power by God's calling, but the rest came with their knives. They assassinated each other. Every king that came to being, killed another king from the being. So there were several dynasties. You know, when God gives you something, you have to do all those wicked atrocities. That's right. Amen. I mean, God picked a man and said, you're going to be a theocratic king. But over there, there were just wicked kings. And God, in mercy, sent prophets to them, like Elijah, Micah, Obadiah, and all these different prophets. We read about them. They're prophesying to either the northern or the southern kingdom. But while they were banished away around the world, and they were out of their land, the foreigners took over that land. Then many hundred years later, her sister went the same way. You know, she just turned on God and turned to Baal and worship Baal and threw up the whole thing. And God got angry and God threw them out too. Yes. But before God did all that, God raised up Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was a man, a priest. And God used him to prophesy to Israel. God never gave Israel a total white off of that you're done. He's going to bring them back because he loves them. And he made a promise to Abraham he has to fulfill Genesis chapter 12. Mm -hmm. read, it, read it. He made a promise to Abraham. He's got to fulfill it. He has to fulfill it because he told him he would. But he was provoked in many times to not to do things. So he got to slow things down. But God used Ezekiel to prophesy about the recovery of the nation of Israel. You need to read, in fact, I got 18 things that Israel recovers today that God in 538, somewhere back there, said he would recover for Israel. And here we are today living in the very realm of the fulfillment of prophecy. Now, if you don't read your Bible, and if you don't study it, you will not realize what's going on. You're going to say to the skeptics, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That's not true. God has done some new things on earth. And people who understand the Bible know that the book is historically correct. It's called His Story. History is His Story. God writing in advance the end from the beginning. That's right. And maybe you want to turn that a little brighter for me so you, so you can see my face later on. That's good. Doesn't bother me. Good. Now you can see Mr. Kim through that camera. Thank you very much. All right, I won't be a shot in the dark. Okay. All right, double jeopardy here. 
the shadow and me. There's double, double jeopardy here. All right. But here God is telling Ezekiel. Now, most people don't go to chapter 40 and the rest of the book. Chapter 40 onward is the millennium in your Bible. You may want to turn there and look at that. When you read from chapter 40 to the end of that chapter book, it's about the millennium. Somebody want to study it, even though I've done it before. We'll do it again, and you're going to see what God planned to do in the millennium for the nation of Israel. It's all laid out. He will not miss one mark. The promises are yes and amen. But chapter 38 and 39 is a direct result of the fulfillment of chapter 36 and 37. Chapter 36 told about her brother, you know, Esau, Edomites, hated Israel. And God said, you got your history. I'm going to wipe you up. 37, God speaks of the reconciliation between the two kingdoms of Israel. How they would be come back and merge into one. Now, can you imagine a stick, two separate sticks in the prophet's hand, and then God said, put them together, and the corner maybe can one stick. He said, magic! No, divine authority. Yes, amen. God put them together. And God said, tell Israel what it means. Uh, Ezekiel was full of uh, symbolism in the end. Symbolism. But that meant that Israel would one day become one again. And you literally saw that. You saw that happen in 1948 if you were born. Obviously, you guys born in the 70s and the 60s. You know nothing about that. But guys like me who was born in 1948, it happened right in my time. I was born in the month of June, so right in my time frame it happened in that area, right in that time. When World War II was over and their nations are being reassembled, Israel became a nation. That stick those became one, or two sticks rather, became one in the hand of the people of God. Now, Ezekiel had no way to falsify that prophecy. He's dead. His fossils are in the grave. Acts 2 tells you that David is a fossil. So there's no way there's any collusion or fixture by the nation of Israel to make it happen. The dry bones was the Holocaust. That's what happened. After the Holocaust, then they became one nation. It was first people without nationality. Now, if you look at Ezekiel 36, I'm going to point some things out to you. And you may want to scan me down the scripture here. Because this is a Bible study. I'm not preaching to you. I'm teaching you. So we're going to talk about the Bible. We're studying the Bible. Now, most Bible schools read about the Bible and never study the Bible. And so they have a man's idea and not God's word. But we're going to compare scripture with scripture. Line up on line. Precept, I put precept, in the mouth of two or three witnesses of Scripture, shall every word be established and be understood. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Ezekiel 36, 33 to 34. Israel would be a rebuilt place from a waste city to a bountiful city. Verse 35, it would be likened to the Garden of Eden. Next, God said in verse 37, they're going to see an explosion of men. They tell me in birth rate, in the Gentile world, most girls survive in pregnancy. But the boys usually get die. But they said more boys are born more than girls. I mean, conceived than girls. But the, the mortality rate is higher among the boys. But for Israel to reverse, it was just like in Egypt, God multiplied men like flock. So men would be multiplied in Israel. Verse 37, verse 38, that waste city become a blessed city, was once cursed, now it's going to be blessed. In chapter 37, in verse 22, he described the nationhood, which was fulfilled in 948. In verse 26 of chapter 27, God said, I'm going to make a covenant of peace. That really took place in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 is the fulfillment of God giving Israel a new spirit, a new heart, and a new man, not all of Israel, only 120. And that's how the church got started. That's the new covenant God made with Israel. Now, all of Israel didn't accept that. The last offer they had was Acts 28. 
and they rejected it. And then God turned to the Gentiles and graft us in. Now, verse 27, God said he would rebuild the tabernacle of David. It's not yet built. However, he called you and me in the church. We're called the temple of God. Something Israel don't subscribe to. <laughs> to Israel, we're just Gentile dogs. <laughs> and even though we're Abraham kids, they don't acknowledge us. But we belong to God by virtue of our new birth. Yes. All right, God said, I've already built a temple, a tabernacle, which will be built in our day. It's going to be the Antichrist temple, which they're going to be fighting over later on. In chapter 38 and verse 8, we see a prophesy that Jerusalem would be recaptured and be under the governance of the nation of Israel. <clears throat> I'm giving some reason why Russia and God and Magog are going to invade Israel. Jealousy. To spoil them. To rob them. The enemy of the Arabs will be all these. The wasteland become a beautiful, like a, it says, the desert shall be turned into a blossoming rose. God going to bless it. In verse 8, chapter 38, Jerusalem become under the governance of Israel again. It's prophesied. It did happen. Verse 11, a peace treaty will be signed that make Israel have a on-wall security concept. We don't need to worry about military might until we feel secure. Somebody is going to sign a peace treaty. Mark that down right there. There's going to be a peace treaty that will ignite war against Israel by the Arab and Islamic group. Because that peace treaty left them out. And they're going to be angry. And that's when Russia is going to come in on the picture. All right? In verse 11. In verse 12... Russia is coming, and he told us why. To take a spoil. You know what spoil mean? To rob them. Rob them of all the blessing that God gave. You know when Laban even tried to rob uh, Jacob on the same level? And God said, I'm going to stop you from doing that. Because this is my doing now. I'm, I'm forgiving Israel, and you will not push them back out of their whole land. You will not take from them what I blessed them with, etc. Verse 13. And they come to rob Israel of gold and silver and cows and much good. Jealousy going to rise up. All right? Verse 14, chapter 38. And in that time, Israel going to feel a carnal security. So that's going to bother their enemies. In chapter 39 of Ezekiel, verse 25, a restoration has taken place where Israel is back in the homeland for good. And you know the nation of the world today is against it. They want them out. It's not going to happen. Verse 26. They're in the land safely. God said the Jews have returned to their homeland. Verse 27. Verse 28, the promised land. And verse 29, you see, God said, I'm in covenant with them. Now, I don't know about you, but in, in some countries, when I was in Africa, they named their house, their cars, their boat, their ship, after biblical names. And I ask, why do they do this? And I'm told, witchcraft. Fear of witchcraft. They believe that by naming their babies and their houses and their cars with these biblical names, it will keep away evil spirit. And so everything was named with biblical names, even their car. I mean, you, you name it, they've named it after the Bible. And it was to keep away evil spirit. A kind of an incantation or superstition there involved. Well, Israel, not knowing that God blessing is on them, thinking of their own doing, but God said, for my name's sake, I will do it. Keep it in mind, that name is going to be the name Jesus Christ. Because a name would be given which Israel would not understand and would reject. Jesus said, I will give you my name, and you'll be hated of all, what? People for my name. Today, we can't pray in the churches, can't pray in the schools, can't pray in function. In every name but the name of Jesus. It is an offense. When they get mad and they hit their finger and they're cussing, 
What name do they curse? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They'll call Buddha, Islam name, or any uh, Krishna's name, or Sintu's name, and they'll call those names, or Karma's name, they call the name of Jesus, and they blaspheme it, and they break the first commandment, the second commandment. They do that, and the devil doesn't do that. Now, I want to show you that. Now, here's what's going to happen here. I'm going to show you some pictures here, hopefully. My little pictures here. There's going to be a force that attracts. It's going to attract Russia to attack Israel. And the, the, the attack is mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's going to happen exactly as God said it will. Even if they read it, they can't change nothing. God declared the beginning from the end, and the end from the beginning. He says both ways. Now, look at this. If you go to your Bible and turn to the ninth chapter of the book of Daniel, and friend, it all interconnect. <laughs> Here a little, there a little, and up on the line, precept and precept, no one prophet had it all. They all had disjointed revelations, but then it's our job to search scripture and write and divide the word of God and put it back together and see what God's talking about and get the pattern of view. So this puzzle that <coughs> bothers people shouldn't bother us. We should know because it's our God doing all these things. If you read the Bible, it says 70 weeks are prophesied against Israel. It's on this chart here, 70 weeks, and I'll show this to me right here. In fact, right here. And the Bible says from 445 B.C., somewhere in here, okay, that means before Christ, right here, that we're there, right here. From here to here, it's called six to nine weeks, from here to here, on this chart. See, here on the top of this here, this went from this distance right here to here. <coughs> this image back here, <coughs> sorry, is 606 B.C. right here. And right here is the year 2000 plus. An image representing that time scale. We understand that? Make sense? And so 445 BC is somewhere right here. On the Arcturuses. When you read the book of Nehemiah and Ezra, that's what we're talking about. Ezra and Nehemiah is about the rebuilding of the wall and rebuilding of the second temple. And Daniel was praying. He lived on the tour of three kings, kingdoms, and he was praying, and God gave him chapter 9, and he explained to him that, yes, of the return back to the homeland, some of you, not all of you, just some, to usher in the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. They have to be at home for Christ to come there and talk to them. So Ezra and Nehemiah and Zerubbabel, and Joshua, these are the restorationists that brought Israel back to their homeland before Christ was born. Now, they happen to come into existence on a troublesome time. When you read the book of Nehemiah, Sanballat, and Tobias, and all these different opposition forces to prevent the rebuilding of Jerusalem, and Artaxerxes, and all these different guys had to support Israel. Cyrus built the temple free of charge. The temple that they had Christ in was Cyrus who built it. And uh, a man called uh, the uh, Herod beautified it for Christ to come and see and be a part of it. All right, now, so I want to show you this chart right here. 70 weeks are prophesied against Israel. I want to show you what it looks like. Now, I know you're going to say, Pastor, this is so complex, I can't understand it. It's hard to understand. Well, you still make it to heaven, whether you understand or not. <laughs> Just live for God. But if you want to know, you can know. If you follow to know, you will know. Okay? Here you folks, see my chart. I'll bring it forward, and then I'm going to be told I'm in the way. All right? You're going to block off the screen now. So, 
I was going there. Are you guys serious? <laughs> All right. Now, this is seven to weeks. From here to here is seven to weeks. From here to here is seven to weeks. Now, we probably want to relocate over this side here, and then you can see the chart and the time frame better. While he's moving it, in Daniel chapter 9, he was praying to God, saying, Oh, God, you made all these promises to us, and now Jeremiah's prophecy is fulfilled, and what are you going to do about it, God? And God said, Okay, I heard your prayer. 21 days ago, I heard a prayer about the, you know, the, the Grecian prince of the air, stop who? Michael. Gabriel. And Michael had to come and help him. Are you with me? So the prince of the air had to come and help him, and he brought the, the prophet to him and said, Look, 70 weeks are determined upon Israel. It's a time clock. Now, on the Gentile, it's the image of chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2. That's a time clock on Gentile. You need to know that. Now, the time clock on the nation of Israel is that 70 weeks. Two different methods of dealing with two different groups of people. Don't confuse them. Okay? We are called Jews inward, but not externally. They're called Jews externally, but may not be Jew inward. Or to get converted. Because Jew means Jewels. Okay? They're from the tribe of Judah. And so God said, now, 70 weeks are determined upon your people, your land, your worship, etc. And events are going to take place, not tonight, I won't go into details in it, but we will do it one more time in this church for you. And we go through each of those things. They're, they're, they're fulfilled in part. Now, the word weeks, you have an understanding of week of years. And here's how we got it. Jacob said, according to Laban, fulfill her weeks. He can marry this girl. Which means a week is equal to one. Seven years. So seven years mean a week, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a week year plan, God given. If you read that naturally, you're going to miss the revelation. But with understanding, you're going to know it's a week of years. Okay? Yeah. So one week actually means seven years. So as far as we know, six to nine, on the six to ninth week, Jesus Christ was crucified right on the dot. Didn't miss a point. He knew when his time had come. Right. And he knew Daniel prophecy. And he died exactly on that date when the Passover was given. On that day, six that week. He says, it is finished. Meaning, all the prophecy concerning me is finished. I'm done. Gone. Now, I'm going to go over here and point to you. I'll get out of the way. Russia, Arabs, and China, on the, on the Magog nations, are going to hear something about Israel. It's going to provoke them to attack Israel. By the Six Day War and the Yom Kippur War, almost provoke Russia to get involved. They were involved in the background, so in the United States but never with, with foot on, on the ground. But they were involved sending airplanes and all that. But this time they're going to come foot on the ground, right? Now, God said, Israel, this time clock is on you. Your, your temple and your wall was built in troublesome times, all right, in the first week, right? Seven weeks is going to happen. And then from seven weeks to six or three more weeks, Messiah will be born and cut off. He was born the exact time he shall be born. And we add the total number of weeks from here to here is six to nine weeks. On the six to ninth week, Messiah will cut off, Jesus Christ died. Now, right here in this chart here is a 2,000 year gap, which you know Uzziah told you about it, that, that 2,000 gap is to bring the Gentiles in. Hosea right. 6, 1 to 3 tells you that. Right? right. And we know also that in uh, Hosea chapter 3, it says, Israel will remain many days after this event without a prophet, a priest, or a king. That happened in the 2000 year period right here, when Israel ceased to be a nation. 70 AD, Israel ceased to be a nation. 
and they became a nation again all over in 1948. That became the bone of contention. Nobody in mind when they got killed in the Holocaust, but now they become a nation all over, and going home, and they shouldn't be, people got upset. Got mad. The devil got mad. Because he wants to stop prophecy. He wants to prevent it. Now, what happened here, so we're living right now in this two days, that after two days, after two days, I'll raise up Israel. That means in the 70th week, are you with me? Israel will be restored on many fronts, on many levels. A nationhood in their homeland. All the things they lost will be restored. Well, it's going to cause problems. The squatters are going to fight. <laughs> They're not going to leave without a fight. And Israel is going to fight to get in the stand, and the world is going to turn against Israel. Now look right here. So where are we right now? We're right here. So I expect to hear in the news that Russia rise up and the Arabs rose up to try to get back the land they lost in battles. They lost it in 1948. The Six Day War and the Yom Kippur War. They lost everything. And everything Israel lost previously, they regained back. There's nothing for Israel to regain now that she does. that's not hers. She has it all. In fact, she's trying to trade land for peace. <laughs> Do you remember Mr. Perez this week with the Pope? He said he wants to what? Have a world global religion? His name is called Perez, right? Is there any link to the, the fact that God told Belshazzar that your kingdom is divided and God used the word Perez? And is it by accident that Perez is advocating that Jerusalem should be divided? Is it? Was it by mistake, the Iranian leader, whose name was similar to Haman, an Amalekite, in the kingdom of Persia, his goal was the same as Haman, to wipe out the nation of Israel? They're not coincidental. The devil hasn't lost his interest. He wants to be God still. He still wants to reign. And he's still working through men. All right? So we're right here. So... All the 18 things I mentioned to you are going to provoke the world peace. Israel will not come to restoration without problems coming out of that. <coughs> the UN don't like what's happening. The United States can't stop it. Russia is going to be the guard for these people. And so this is what's going to happen. Now, God and Magog mean all the northern countries north of Palestine. <coughs> You can look on the map, and you can see what it looks like, and you can see for yourself. So the invasion will be, like I showed you this map right here, in 33 AD, Christ died. After that, Israel ceased to be a nation in 70 AD until 1948, Israel became a nation. Due to this gap, Israel was all over the world, and suddenly they want to go home after the Holocaust. After the Holocaust, Israel went back to Palestine and found that others are living in that place. And so they want it back. Well, they start bulldozing homes. And the Arabs got mad. The fight is on. So-called terrorists today is based on that. But why? Because in 1948, we see the restoration of Israel as a nation, Palestine restored, Prosperity return, the birth of men's population, they multiplied men like you and like, like, like rats. Mm -hmm. There's men out of the flocks of men, and, and the army is a mighty army. So Ezekiel is fulfilled. This, by necessity, must give rise to God and Magog to get provoked by it. God is going to do to God and Magog like he did to Pharaoh. Before the cross, they would say, God brought us out of Egypt from the hand of Pharaoh. In the New Testament, it would say, God 
that brought us from the North Country. Russia will not let Jews out. They have to buy their way out. That's right. The Antebi Airport uh, disaster in Africa, where the Jews were rescued from Idi Amin. It was a wonderful escape for a lot of Jews. And still there are Jews in Ethiopia who cannot make it home to lack their Jews, because they won't let them out. So many countries still hang on to Jews and won't let them out. It's going to take God to bring them out of those places. All right? Now, to do the church age, we can look forward to a day when there's going to be a sudden disappearance of Christians. We call that the rapture. Once the rapture takes place, a man is going to come on the scene. He's alive today. He'll be a Jew. He'll be a Syrian Jew. He will merge in politics with religion. Okay? So Christendom makes sense to me. Christendom is a mixture of Islamic and Christianity under the umbrella of the Abrahamic birth of Ishmael and Isaac. Okay? And so once the church is gone, then this man will be revealed. You know why? Because if you open your Bible right now, look at there, in chapter 4, it's the rapture of the church. You should look at Revelation chapter 4. Chapter 5 is where you appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive your reward for the works you did in evangelism and living for God. Nobody will be lost in chapter 5 from the church. Right. You may lose reward, but you can't lose your soul. While the church is in heaven at the Bema seat of Christ, the world is being rearranged. Then Jesus Christ opened up the seal. The church will be there to watch him do it. Once he opened it, because there's no man in heaven or on earth or below the earth that was able to open that seal, which Daniel sealed. When he opened that seal, the Bible tells us he will release the four horses of the apocalypse. It tells you the white horse, the red horse, and the black horse, and the pale horse. Someday we'll discuss those again. I want to get sidetracked here. But uh, the white horse is the one to worry about right now. That guy is the beast or the antichrist, which will come and will bring Israel a pseudo peace. If you know Bible history, under Alexander's demise, where his four generals took over his kingdom, and the two survival kingdom of his was the Ptolemy Egyptian and the Seleucid, which are Syrians. And there's a guy called Antiochus Epiphany. He was a forerunner of the Antichrist. In Daniel chapter 8, he talks about it very clearly what he was going to do. What he did was trying to Hellenize the Jews and also make the Jews worship at an altar that was an abomination to God. He was a forerunner of the Antichrist, and everything he did will be repeated in Revelation. Now, so what's happening here, well, this man is revealed. At first, he's going to claim credit for what happened to Russia and God and Magog because the God of Israel is going to be the one that is praised. But he's going to come and present himself as if he's for them and deceive them. And they're going to sign a peace treaty with them, and that peace treaty will guarantee peace with the backing of the ECM. Remember, he is that little horn that came out of the ten horns of Daniel chapter 7. We got the lion, Bear, the leopard, and the fourth one, none the script they couldn't describe him, which is Rome, a chameleon. And it says the fourth kingdom is gonna be the worst in all the kingdoms. And those king and he got ten horns in that book. There's no crown on their horns. In Revelation they got crowns on in their they're reigning now. And it said, from those ten will come a little horn. And he will overthrow three. 
and all the seven will give their power to him. Now, when all that's being done, where's Russia at this time? Not yet upset. Once they consolidate this ten and make Israel the protection and the promise to a European system, or the Master Treaty, or the ECM system, then East and West are going to have to be with it. In other words, the Eastern countries are going to be uh, the, the Asiatic and the uh, Northern, the uh, Mayball countries. They're going to be upset at what's going on because you got a veto power right now. you got the, the super, super nation with, with, with uh, veto power to veto whatever's going to be done by the UN. So the UN is just a puppet, really, it's all they are. They're powerless. So what's going to happen is this man, with the support of God, is going to be powerful. Here's why. Chapter 13 of Revelation, go there please. And verse 1 to 5, the devil is going to give him his seat and authority and his power. That's all about power. Hello? He will be like Judas, the son of perdition, the lawless one. The man in 2 Thessalonians, in chapter 2, that says he wants to be in the seat of God, show himself to be God, that guy, going to be there. He will succeed because God will promote his success. That success will provoke the, the Soviet Union and the Arabs, and they're going to be angry. And then I said, look, man, we will not take this thing lying down. Hello? And so they're going to invade right here at the beginning of seven years. Why? Because Israel have peace be designed. Israel have a security that they don't like. Israel have national prosperity. Israel landed as the Garden of Eden. Israel is going to be populated with a lot of people. And going to be the end of the Arabs. So, what will they do? They're going to go see Russia. Now, Sunnis and Shia are not all on the Russian team. Iran are Shia. So the Shia Muslims are going to be in league with Russia. And the Sunni Muslims are going to link with the West. They divide it. Sunni and and you can tell the difference. Look in Psalm 83 and compare it to Ezekiel 39 and see the difference in the Arab lineup of nations. You can see the difference right there. Two different groups. One is Sunni and one is what? Shia. Shia. Shia is good by the, the, the haven of rest for Shia doctrine is where? Iran. Iran, they're not Arabs. What are they? They're Persians. How many knew that? Yes. They're persons. So it's an ethnic war also going on. I mean, you can see that. All right? Now, Iraq and Saudi Arabia, those are what? Sunnis. But they both hate Israel. But they both can't get along. Mm -hmm. So one is going to support the West, and one will support Russia. And the West is not going to attack Israel. Not now, anyway. But Russia will. And God tell who they are. And so, look what's going to happen to you now. God and country of Magog are mentioned in chapter 38 and 39. And it's just before the tribulation starts. Okay? Seven years peace treaty is signed. Now, we're going to look at scripture just a minute here. And find the magnitude of the people that's going to be killed. What do you notice right here? After God get rid of the Islamic jihadist and the Russian power, which is described in Ezekiel 38, 39, that refers to the demise of communist Russia and the associate country that links with them, all right? Then the Antichrist will take over, and he will have full reign. That's why it says in chapter 13 of Revelation, who is able to make war with them? Obviously, either the United States have demise in power and strength, or become an ally to Europe, which I think will be a part of it. <coughs> I'm going to stand that. So, 
We're going to go to, to the book of Daniel 39. Let's go there. We're going to have to read the scripture because I want to get the message. Let me point some things out, some dates when it's going to happen. And it's very important to you that you know, I don't think your kids are going to have a happier world down the road to come. Your kid is in a bankrupt world. Your kid have a world that's full of deficit with God. And you're going to have to live in troublesome times. Perilous times. So you better pray for them. And they'll talk like Hezekiah. But pray for your kids. Because they're going to live in perilous times. And they have no idea what's going to happen to them. But that's the hand of Christ. <coughs> Here's where this thing going to happen. It's Ezekiel 38 and verse 8. All that I'm saying to you is going to happen in the latter years, which is now. Verse 16, 38, 16. In the latter days. And then verse 7 and 19 says, in that day. All right? We know in verse 7 of 38, chapter 38, that Russia will be the, the guard for the mess that's coming against Israel. In verse 1 to 3, we know it's God and Magog. Magog is a land, a land mass of people, all the way to the, to the Great Wall of China, go all the way back there to India and all those Mongolian nations and the Sixteens and all those people. All right? It covers all that generation. And they're all either communist or what? Islamic. Definitely not Christians. They're anti-Christians. All right? We know in verse 4 to 7 of Ezekiel 38, it's Arabs and the millions. Verse 9, so they're coming as the cloud. Chapter 38 and verse 9. As the sound of the seashore. All right? We notice that in verse 13, some countries, which I believe will be Sunnis, will not participate in it. They'll only ask the question, have you come to take a spoil? In verse 13. In verse 15, we're told them it's a mob. It's a, a massive pandemonium and great crowd coming against Israel. She can't survive. By a mere number, they'll be overrun. You can't, you can't kill them all. You can't shoot down everybody with bullets. You can't bomb them all. They're going to overrun Jerusalem, take it from Israel. But God said it won't happen. All right? Verse 22 says, many, many coming with Russia. Leading. And in verse 9, it says, they're coming like a storm, a stormy cloud. And they're coming from the north, the northern north. Verse 8, chapter 38. And from the place of the north, they're coming with a mighty army, verse 15. In other words, more powerful than Pharaoh was in the book of Exodus. Right? And we know it's a league of Arabic nation, because verse 5 and 6 tells you that. But what's so shocking to the Western mind today, why would they go to armory of war, look at verse 4, 9, and 15, why would they come with weaponry that Israel could burn for seven years? You can't burn steel. Why will they do that? You have to understand, they're coming down the mountain. People still hunt with, 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 with bow and arrows. And radar don't pick those things up. Radar don't pick up bodies unless you got night goggles to pick up people coming, right? So Israel is not aware of what's going on. And we're told the invasion is a result of jealousy, and they want to overthrow the prosperity of Israel. But God said, I'm going to stop you and turn you back <clears throat> in my fury. In verse 4, 18, 20, and 21, 22, God said, I'm going to do this thing to you. I'm going to send an earthquake. I'm going to send fire and brimstone like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. So two things I'm going to do. The same plague he used in the days of Noah, <coughs> and the same judgment in the days of Lot, which is rain, flood, a flash flood going to hit them, Amen. 
and fire and brimstone from heaven all at the same time, plus earthquake. Are you with me? Now, we're going to look at chapter 39. We see in verse 1, it said, I'm against thee. Verse 2, he said, I will turn you back. And I'll only need one-sixth of your army. But I'm going to destroy not only the army, but the people in the land of Magog. So God's going to say in judgment, not only on the invading army, but on their homeland. While they remember Ahai, when Ahai was chasing Joshua, they remember that. And while they're chasing Joshua, they left their city. I'm going to look behind them. The city's on fire. Right. And before them, what happened? God sent hailstone and killed them all. It says God killed more with hailstone than Joshua with his sword. All right? We read that in verse uh, 6 and 8 in chapter 39, that God will destroy that league of nations that come secretly from the north, and God said the surety of it established in verse 8. God said, it's going to happen, like I said, and he's the word, thus said the Lord. So there's no question about it. It's going to be so devastating that, listen now, it says in verse 9 to 11, it's going to take seven years to cleanse the land. And seven months to bury dead people. Now I did a calculation here. Ready for the calculation? Listen for it now. Let's suppose one million Israelites, Jews, each were required to bury two corpses per day for 180 days of that seven months. How many corpses would be buried in that time? I tell you. 360 million corpses. I'm going to stand that. I'll back up again and explain to you. If one million Jews, after it's all happened, were conscripted to go bury those people, and each were required each day for 180 working days of the seven months to bury two corpse each day. How many corpse would be buried in total? It would be 360 million corpse. And that's not for seven months. In other words, it's a big stink. Are we going to understand that? Yeah. It will be a bigger grave than the Holocaust was. And here's the sad part. They cannot put Israel on trial for that. Because Israel had no intervention or involvement. This was divine intervention. Because when it takes place, look what's going to happen. Now God, when God broke the back of Pharaoh in the Red Sea, Rahab said, we heard what your God did to Egypt. And we know what you did to Ahab. And we want to know what kept you these 40 years why you have not yet come. Well, we know the delay was not based on God's problem. It was the 10 spies who convinced Israel that they could not win the battle against those giants, the Anakins. And so they delayed 40 years. But Rahab said, we heard. And everybody's heart melted. And the fear of your God is on everybody. Yes. And the best defense is an offense. And 38 nations, I believe, rose up to fight against Joshua out of fear. How many did he conquer? All. Oh, the only one he almost lost was Ahab because of Achan. And they knew it was the God of Israel. 
Now, here's what God's going to do when this war starts between Russia and on the hill of Israel. You can follow along with me. In Ezekiel 38, 23, in that day, God says, the whole world is going to know that I'm God. In 39 and verse 6, he says, they're going to know that I am the Lord. In verse 7 it says, they're going to know me now as the Holy One in Israel. Now you know who, who the Holy One is? Who's the Holy One? Where does it say? Thou shalt not suffer thy Holy One to seek corruption. Who's that person? Jesus. Who's the Holy One? Jesus. Jesus. Verse 13 to 39. God will be glorified for that event. In verse 21, not Allah, but Jesus Christ's name will be glorified and revealed. In verse 22, Israel's eyes will be open, paving the way for chapter 11 of Revelation to take place, where Moses and Elijah could open their eyes. To see that Jesus Christ is gone. Twice they did that. Elijah did that at Mount Carmel. When he brought fire down by divine intervention. Moses brought the knowledge of God to Egypt when he divided the Red Sea. And a mixed multitude came out of Egypt. Because the Egyptians believe on the God of Israel. Now... The same thing is going to happen when Israel's eyes is open in verse 22 or 39. And then the Gentiles are going to realize there is a God after all. In verse 23. Because they know Israel was not spared by her weaponry of war. God said, I will not save them by that. And yet that's not the, that's not the army getting a war either. Here's what's God out of the game with Russia. <laughs> with a mousetrap. Verse 25, <coughs> his name will be revealed. What did they say about karma? The Lord, he is God. It takes a divine intervention to tell this world, which we have not yet seen. The weatherman, credit, <coughs> nature, and weather, and, and smog, what's going on? They equate the earth, equ uh, earthquake to a fault in the rock. Nobody said it's that of God. But God said, I will be glorified in that day. Verse 27. God said, I'll be sanctified. That word means I will be exalted above all the gods. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, the man of God? What happened in that chapter? The decree went, there is no God like this God. Who can do this? Yes. What about uh, Dan lines den? Divine intervention. What was the decree after that? There is no God like this God. Is that right? Amen. After 10 days of not being defiled, what did they discover? They were 10 times smarter. That's I'm trying to tell you, yes. there come a time when God divinely intervened and they're going to say, this is the hand of God. Yes. Amen. And he chooses moment. Yes. Amen. Well, Ezekiel, because everybody's afraid of Russia right now. She has moved in onto different properties, taken over countries. Everybody's afraid of ISIS and Islam and jihad, except God, except Israel. And divine intervention is going to show the people, once they're all afraid, and say, who can deal with the situation? And God said, no, it's time for me to step in and show who God is. And make his arm bare. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 20. Israel and the world are going to know God is the true God. Now I want us to read together verse 1 of, of chapter 39. Therefore the Son of Man prophesy against God. I mean the prince. And say, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I'm against thee, O God, 
the chief prince of Meshach in Moscow, uh, Tobolsky, and I will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee. In other words, 83% or 83% of the armies of that communist and the Islamic system will be wiped off the earth. Because they're coming in full force to overthrow Israel once and for all. And God says, only one-sixth of will be left. And it will cause thee to come up from the north parts and bring thee upon the mountain of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrow to fall out of thy right hand. <coughs> you know, if you watch Chinese movies and wars and that in the past, what's their favorite weapon? Sword. Is that right? And arrows and knives. What's Muslims' weapon? Sword, not guns. The West use bombs and swords, right? But they use what? Weapon of Asian. If you go to, if you go to Middle East right now, you're surprised. You go back in time. They still ride camels. <laughs> they still wear robes. They still do things that the West have no idea about. The bathrooms, the landmass. It's another world. It's not paved my way like here. You don't go to the far see a sand dune and see pyramids. You're back in ancient time in the Middle East. I'm telling you the truth. So the weaponry does not surprise me at all. Because the only weapon they have is the one they stole from the West or they got it from the West. But they have none on their own. They are still primitive with their weaponry. And thou shalt fall upon the mountain of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field, to be the God said, I'm going to feed it to the, to, to the dogs. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken, said the Lord. In other words, it's certain. And I will set a fire on Magog. See that? Magog is the land. Now, this land go all the way to China. That means up to the walls of China, there'll be an inflagration, conflagration of fire and brimstone, like Sodom. He said, I don't believe it can happen. Well, look in the Bible. Five cities were destroyed right. when Lot came out. Right. Five cities. Amen. Although Zohar was allowed to stay, because who was there? Lot. Lot. And among them that dwelt curiously in the isles. What's the isles? Little cities. And they shall know that I am the Lord. In other words, they don't know. Because this time Israel is not fighting, it's God fighting. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people of Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. What's that name? Jesus. What's that name? Jesus. Neither is there salvation given in any other name. name. For there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, if you read. The Talmud, the Talmud actually cursed that name. In fact, they said the name of Jesus being a pig. And there, I gave you some information before that showed the blasphemy in their writings about the name of Jesus. They, they dishonor him. Right. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy Two, what? the Holy Trinity. Holy no, the Holy One in Israel. Right. Where's he at? He is in Israel. Behold, it has come and it's done, said the Lord God. God says, for me, it's already done. This is the day where I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set fire and burn the weapons, both the field and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the hand staves, the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. He said, I don't believe those things that exist. When I was in Africa, people stood up in tatches, loincloth, still carry arrows. They still fight against each other with bow and arrow and spears. You see, it doesn't happen. It happened around the world, even in China, too. When you go to China, there's some places you can't go. They will not let you go there. You'd be surprised how primitive Russia is and how, how dilapidated their places are in contrast to the West. <clears throat> in fact, they tell me, taking their, their airplanes, not even safe to go on their airplanes. 
Now, for seven years, they'll be burning things. That's a long time. But that seven year is the, is the 70th week, period. Because all that many bodies, if only 380 million in what I calculated, can you imagine how many are going to be there? Now, whenever Islamic rise up, they come as a flood. Yes. They overpower countries. They overpower governments. You can't kill them all. You can't shoot them all. And they use this mobosity, the, 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 the mob system. It comes. Now, that's how they fight. That's how they go to war. All right? And so come to pass, in verse 11, in that day that I will give up God a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. Right? It says here, and shall, and shall stop the noses of the passengers, makes sense to me, and they shall, be, they, they shall bury God and all the multitude. In other words, the leader, just like Pharaoh was destroyed, just like uh, Belshazzar was destroyed, like Haman was destroyed, the prince of God would make a sad mistake and lead the charge and get killed in the valley. And they shall call it the valley of Hamgog. All right? That means the graveyard of, Ham, of Magog. Now, church, you know, the Queen of England, the name is not Queen Elizabeth. You know that, don't you? Right? And Pharaoh is not the name of the king. We know that. And so God is not the name of the man. It's his title. Like Hylas Selassie. That's not, his, that's not his name. That's his title. You understand that? Rastafarian. You know, you know, the guys are going to misuse that. Well, that's a title of, a, of an emperor. So it is a title. All right? And seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of them, that they may cleanse the land. Well, that's a sad thing for Israel for them to be polluted. Yet all the people of the land shall bear them, and shall be to them known, renowned the day that I shall be glorified, said the Lord God. Now, why do you want to know this? Because I'm telling you, that's where we're going right now. It's exactly where we're headed. Whether you, you, you receive it or not know it, it's irrelevant. This is going to happen. Right. And if you miss the rapture, you'll be a part of this. <coughs> and if you're going to the rapture, you won't know it took place, but it's going to happen. Right. You're going to be involved or be taken out of it. All right? And they shall see out men and continue employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. And at the end of seven months they shall search. And the passengers that pass through the land, when they see the man bone, they shall set up a sign by it till the burials are buried in, in the valley of Hamgod. In other words, here's God describing events that not even yet has transpired. Why? Because he said, I'm the Lord that declared the what? The end from the beginning. Now I know this don't make you shout. But this make me want to go in the rapture. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Make me want to go. Yes. And also the name of the city shall be Hamona. They shall cleanse the land. That's what it means. And thou said of man, Thus the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field, and send me your son, and come, gather your son on every side to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, my Lord. Even the great sacrifice upon the mountain of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. Wow. He shall eat the flesh of the mighty, and drink the blood of the prince of the earth, of the rams, of the lambs, of the goats, of the bullocks, of all of the the fat ladies of the basin. Please, guys, rams don't mean literal rams. These are levels of leadership, political power that be. I understand that? He called kings mountains. And then, and then the next coming down hills. God uses his metaphor. <clears throat> and he shall eat fat till he be full and drink blood till he be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. This is no way 
close to the Armageddon War. Because <clears throat> he won't even come down to do this, he'll send fire down. They're dead. With the Armageddon War, he's literally coming down on the Mount of Olives. He told me very plainly where he's going to go. He's going to put, put, so I'm gonna put my feet on the Mount of Olives, and that's right before where the Golden City <clears throat> faced the wall of the temple. And behind him is the sea. And he says, I'm going to split that place into four, and the blood of that war will up to the heart of what? You know, I've been to there. I've seen that place. It's a far flung field. And for blood to be that much, that means billions and billions and billions of people died. How many pints of blood is in the human body? Eight pints? Come on now. Eight pints of blood. And then coming to the orchard's bridle, the blood bank will have no problem having blood today. <laughs> Amen. You're gonna flow. Flow. You know what that's doing? Plus, not to mention, he can turn the sea into blood. And the rivers into blood. And every drinking water the blood said, You don't have to kill people, you don't have to shed blood, here's blood, drink it. The sarcasm of God. Hello? All right, verse 20. Thus shall he be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, with all the men of war, said the Lord God. Verse 21. And I'll set my glory among the heathens. This is now. And all the heathens shall see my judgment that I've executed at my hand that I've laid upon. In other words, the news got to get around the world. That Israel God is fighting for them. Right. I remember one word in the Bible that says their God is fighting for them. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You know? Yes. When army came against Israel to fight, and Israel felt outnumbered, and the young men cried, Oh, we're as good as dead. Yeah. And you praise the Lord, open his eyes. Mm -hmm. And there were chariots of angels. Huh? Angels yeah. around them. Mm -hmm. And then God, he said, God blinded them. And they blind their eyes. Uh, they couldn't see. Right. You think God changed? Yes, no, He hasn't changed. Amen. Let's worship Him right now. Hallelujah. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God for that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went in captivity. For the, and what he's trying to say here is, I'm not accepting any blame for their problems. Right. They reap what they sow. What they sow. Yes. I backed out of their lives, and they had no covering, and they suffered. But when I step in, they don't lose battles. Amen. 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 Yes. It's a set of backsliders. Mm. They leave Jesus Christ. They go back on drugs, mm -hmm. commit suicide, they're in jail, they do terrible things. Why? Because the protection is gone. It's gone. Amen. Praise God. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went in captivity for their iniquity because they transgressed against me. Therefore I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. Now, church, you know, in 70 AD, the prince of Rome, Titus, came in 70 AD, even though he was told by Caesar, do not destroy their temple, keep it, because that's, that's the way Rome will operate. But the, the, the zeal of the soldiers and, and the massacre, amen, uh, they destroy the temple. And, 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 and in 170 AD, they complete the job. I went to a place called, uh, it's up on the hill, it's called, is it Mazestine? What's it name? It's called. Oh, Mazestine. I can't remember the name of the place, but where the Jews and, and the Romans, Herod's fought. Masada? Masada. Masada. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you have to see Masada. Masada is on a high, high, high hill. The Jews live up there, and they... In fact, it was built by first by Herod, and the Jews went there and destroyed the Romans' garrison and took it over. And the Romans tried to get it back. 
it was a time of massacre, mass suicide. But you know, you know how the Romans got up there? The Romans could not go up because the Jews would pour on them hot lead and water and burn coming up the hill. So they couldn't go up there. So what they did was they captured Jewish prisoners and they used the prisoners to build a dirt ramp and go up. And the Jews would not pour on their own people those things. So they hide behind them and got there. And when they went, they were all dead bodies. Not one person went. They killed their babies, killed themselves, and said, we will not go under your leadership. And they killed themselves. Masada. It's a, we, we just heard Masada. It's, you got to look it up. Masada. We've been there. And it, it's amazing. You can look over all of Jerusalem as far as you can look. So you can see the Dead Sea from, from there. But that's how they died. Now, the Jews today have Golda Meir during the, the Six-Day War. I mean, the, I mean the Yom Kippur War. She said, look, we will not be defeated as before. And she picked up her nuclear weapons to use them when the United States stopped her. When they asked her, would you, would you have used it? She said, I would have, because we have a covenant that we will not have another Holocaust. Right. We rather have, what? Suicide. Mm -hmm. And give in. That's a given. Jews make for their mind to die. Now, church, we're living in perilous times. He's watched out until failure. Verse 29. Verse 28. It says here, uh, I want to read verse 25 so you get this here. Therefore, this is the Lord God. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and be just by holding the name. And after that, they have borne their shame, and all their trespasses were by their trespass against me, when they dwell safely in their land. None shall make them afraid. In other words, God says, they will not be kicked up by the UN. God said, they're not leaving. They're there for good. They're the planting of the Lord. When I brought them again from the people. Now when this was being prophesied, where were Israel at this time? Still in captivity. Under who? Babylon, which is Iraq. They were still in captivity. And gathered them out of their enemy's land. And I'm sanctifying them in the sight of many nations. Then they know that I am the Lord their God which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathens. But I have gathered them out of their own, but I have gathered them onto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. So God said, I'm going to make sure every Iota Jew come home or die where he's at. But not one will left outside of Palestine. Or land of Israel. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, said the Lord. Now, folks, verse 29. I'm going to tell you right now, that verse 29 means they're going to have an Acts chapter 2 experience. You say, I don't believe that. Yes, sir. Because that's where it started. In Acts 2, the rejected Christ came and made a new covenant. They rejected it, and they went for this covenant. They rejected the covenant of the Holy Ghost. When Stephen tried to warn them about it, they stoned him. They killed him. Did they not? They killed him. All right, in Acts chapter 7. So, right here, the Antichrist is going to come and give them a, a, a false promise. But he has to be a Jew. And when he does it, for three and a half years, it'll be okay. Revelation 6 to 12. And then in the middle of the seventh year, the devil got thrown out of heavens on the ground, earthbound, with a seal on him. And then he energized the Antichrist to break the covenant and turn to Israel and said, I want to be God. I prove it to you. Turn with me to Ezekiel 28. Compare Ezekiel 28, 1 to 4, with. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, 
one to four. Sorry? I said go is equal to twenty eight. One to four. Cyrus said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God. Go look where Tyrus is. Tyrus and Sidon. We look where they are. Right where the Philistines are, where the Philistines are. Who is this Imam that's supposed to come? Imam and all these guys. Who are they? Hmm? Think about it. Sister Church, the people that know their God are not worried what's going on. We're going to work an exploit for Jesus. And we know in the back of the book we win. No matter what happened, he said, I am the way, the only way. I am the door. There is no other door. There is no other hope. That's how this name of Jesus Christ. There is no other gospel. There is no other salvation. There is no other book but the Bible, the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And all the rest we'll find out later on when he rises up to show himself. No. You notice here, it tells you that Tyrus, king, and the king of fierce countenance in chapter 2, so let's load in, are saying the same thing. Daniel 12 says, he plan is thrown between the seas. What seas? It's either the Mediterranean and the Sea of Galilee or the Dead Sea. They'll be right in Jerusalem. Hello? Jerusalem is the city of God. It's the place of worship. And right now if you go there, there are more statues than you want to see. And one, because it's trampled on the foot by the who? Gentiles. Now, so Russia is going to do her business, but we know she won't last, and we know ISIS won't last, and ISIS won't be put down by the United States bomb, and nor will the uh, jihad, no, that, that won't be the one. God reserved it for himself. <clears throat> he has to make a name. At some point in the term, let the world know who he is. You see, he, the, tw the 20, I think, fortified chapter of the book of Isaiah. Let me show what God is doing. God is in hiding. <laughs> Isaiah 45. I'm going to close here, folks. I don't know if you understand this. God is in hiding. He says, Verily, thou art a God that what? Hide thyself, O God of what? Of Israel. He said, He hide himself. In fact, the whole <coughs> chapter 45. He says, I am, there's none like me, there's none beside me, and let's see now. Look at verse 11. Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, ask of me things, con things to come concerning my sons. So who is your son? Israel. And concerning the work of my hands, commanding me. For I have made the, the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, all the hosts. I command him. He was in the world, and the world was made by yeah. him. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> and he goes on, and then it says here, in verse 21, it says, Beside me there is no Savior. Is that right? No, I'm not finding the script I'm looking for. But he says, he says, Thou art the God that hidest thyself. And so God came out of hiding and made himself known in the body of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So, in closing here, I want you to know that this is the map of Israel here, right here. Seven year period. We're on the verge of it right now. That's why there's all this war going on. And after the tribulation period, and Israel is purged, listen to this, only one-third of Israel will be saved. Though Israel be as the sand of the seashore, yet only a remnant. Ladies, you know when you have a remnant in your sewing machine, 
That means only leftovers. Only a remnant will be what? Saved. If you go to the 12th chapter of uh, the book of, uh, in fact, that's the 12th chapter, the 14th chapter of Revelation, look right there, you're going to see that there's a name written in the forehead of those Jews that are saved. Tell me what that name is. Please go there, please. The 14th chapter. All right? Having the name of his father written in their foreheads. What is that name? Jesus. I'm coming my father's name. Yes. And you would not receive me. And another shall come in his own name. Him you will receive. So after the Antichrist, see Russia is defeated, then he become the number one champion. And he will rule the world. God says it would right here. In the chart right here. He will, this man, will rule. When he comes, there will be war. When, the, when he, when this war, when there will be famine. And that famine is going to be death. Hello? Yes. And that death will be destruction, etc., etc. The eighth kingdom, the first one, was Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, Rome. And the one that was, when John wrote it, the one which is, the Roman Empire, and the one to come, which is the ECM, already fulfilled the seventh, and on the seventh will come the eighth. The eighth is the Antichrist. And that man is very much alive in our world. And just like Judas, nobody knew that Judas was going to be the betrayer. Even though Zacharias talked about it. But Jesus knew from the beginning. And don't forget, he worked miracles. Raise the dead, sign on this, but Jesus called him a devil. He says, I chose you all, and it's still one of you is a devil. So Russia, by right, has to rise up. Europe is scared to death and will do nothing about it. Russia will take over more country. All the countries she lost, she's going to win them back, and she and the Islamic nation the same thing in common, they want to go back to historical prominence. And they'll do it by all means. And they're doing it right now. It will affect Canada, will affect you one day, will affect you someday. But just about when the conflagration is about to take place, the church will be gone in a yes. moment, in the twinkle of an eye. Amen. You won't have time to go home and do nothing. That's right. It's gone! Amen. So Israel will never leave that promised land. Never. They will partition the land. They will. But they will never leave it. I saw him there. What? That man you say is going to take over there. Is he, a, is he a man or is he part? Is he a devil? Or? No, he's a man. And that's by the devil. We're told in chapter 13 of Revelation that the devil gave him his seat, his authority. He's called exactly what Jesus was called. The son of per perdition. And that's not Jesus incarnated, no. So their own Jew rose up and... Don't forget, Jesus was a Jew. In fact, Judas came from the tribe of Judah. No surprise. Yes. From the tribe of Judah. And he, he, he uh, turned on his Messiah. He sold him to Rome. And don't forget, Israel denied Jesus as their king and said, Caesar is our king away with him. So he said, good, I will not come back until you say, blessed is he in the name of the Lord. In other words, Ichabod, the glory has departed. When the glory lifted up, what happened to them? Same with Ezekiel. When Ezekiel, he saw the glory of God and lift off the temple. When God showed Ezekiel in, in Ezekiel prophecy, he saw those men through the walls worshiping the sun god. The moon god. Right? Well, the sun moon god is linked with God and Magog. Look it up. The wilderness of sin. Mount Sinai. And they came to a place called Sin. That's where the Chinese used to live until they got pushed out to where they are. Sin, the land of sin, or the wilderness of sin, that's where China's were. 
That's where they work. The Mongolians and all those people, they're all in together. You got a first surprise. And they're, they're anti-God. They're against God. They're also usually Islamic. Most of them are. Lots of Islamists are in, in China. Lots in Russia. And Russia is appeasing them and giving them what they want because of the, the violence that they, they can create. And they're very serious about their violence. All right. Are there any questions so far? So as um, far as I'm concerned, Russia, your history is written for you. Your epitaph is you will be buried on the top of Mount Gilboa. <laughs> So the next time you're in the news tomorrow, do it all worked up. Just say, just like it's written. Yes. Islam, she's got to run her course. She has to run her course. Don't forget, Balaam and Baal for years run. Pharaoh, over 430 years, Pharaoh was in power. God told Abraham that. And God said, when I'm ready, I'm going to visit them and bring them out. Yes. God said, I raised them up for this purpose to show the world how powerful I am. Because I mean, the world don't know God. The world don't know God at all. So God can do something so they can know him. Even on your job, you know, God does things for us on the job. They know it. It has to be God. And Israel won all their wars. Emus was outnumbered. Even when there was a surprise attack. It's not that she's superior. God said, you're not the greatest among the nations. You're the least among the nations. But I want to show my power through you. That the world might know that I am the Holy One. And there is no other. Any question on this side? I'm done with Russia. It's done. They're done. How about this side? Any question? Sudim. You look puzzled. <laughs> Kim? Where the beam? Go on, shoot that at me. I want to hear it. I'm telling you, folks, it's going to be exactly as this book says. This is the only general who can declare his strategy up front, and the enemy can do nothing about it. Satan's days are numbered. Satan don't have long on earth. He knows it. He told Jesus back then, it's not time yet. He know the prophecies. Hello. But the last scripture I should show you before I go, so I don't come back to this anymore. Let's go to the book of Revelation. I need to show you before I go. So I won't come back to this for a long time. I won't. That's a long time to do it. When, 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 uh, Russia is defeated, and all their allies, they will cease to exist as a world power. But the Antichrist will rise up, and he himself got defeated. Are you with me? So he won't be around to challenge what Ezra have left in what? Millennium. He will not enter the millennium. All the nations that rose up against Israel, all the, all the Arab nations, Show them to you here. We know their names. Should have four here. And then before it. All the nations in Psalm 83. That's good enough for you to read. Psalm 83, tell the nations there. You're going to see the fall of Iraq, Damascus, fall of Rome, fall of Russia, fall of Satan, and all these all these fallen states will take place. And the scriptures for it. God talk about their fall. They're going to fall. They're going to go down and cease to exist. But the man Christ Jesus should reign. Now, when, when all that happened, the only world power left after this guy got defeated and the millennium is completed, 1,000 years of millennium is where Israel reign and complete all the promises made in the book of Genesis chapter 12. It's all completed. They 
God doesn't own anybody in the faith. And now, Satan, let us turn the chapter of the book of Revelation, please. Verse 1. And Satan shall be bound for a thousand years. It's not that Jesus can't handle him. He's not to bound him. But he's going to trouble Israel, right? He will. He and, and one-third angels. Right? By the way, I don't know if you know this, and I'm going to be this right now. There are some spirits bound there that fell from day one of creation, and God held them in chain of darkness, reserved for these perilous times, to do terrible things. These are evil angels. Some were released in the wilderness on Israel when they rose up against Moses. I remember that story. God sent evil angels among them that hurt them. These are evil angels with God permission. Do you recall how uh, Ahab, Ahab was, would not listen to the man of God and, and said against him and fought against him in, in the northern kingdom? And what God did, God allowed angels to go down and lie to him and deceive him. That still happened to church today. In fact, the second chapter of Thessalonians said, God said, I will choose their delusion. And I'll let them believe a lie and be damned. And I won't call some name right. I know right now some name of religion, they're going to end up with, with deception. Those virgins are looking for don't exist. Those virgins don't exist. The moment they die straight to hell, they go. Make a fire, burn it. Well, not hell, make a fire, but hell. So it's a great judgment day. Now, it said that Satan is bound for how long? One thousand years. Why a thousand years? Because every nation had their reign for these thousand years, except Israel. And God promised to Israel, you're going to reign. Give you your chance. And after a thousand years, you're going to loosen Satan. Verse 8 and 9 says that. Right? For a season, you're going to go and deceive the whole world. Look at verse 7 and 8. You're going to go and deceive the whole world. Go there, please. Verse 20. Right? You're going to loose up this prison to deceive the nations. Now, our nations, think me, God. Harvard, Oxford, University, bunch of quacks, bunch of nutcases. Those universities knows nothing. In fact, Harvard, Oxford, those were one-time churches that become performing arts. You know arts are? Yoga, yoga and all that nonsense. Witchcraft. Seances. An illicit lifestyle. Weirdos. And they lost their revelation, become secularized, and they pushed God out of the picture. Sad to say, our churches are becoming that same way. The moment you throw standard out, you, you lost it. Right. Because a standard is something you see. Right. And when the standard is lowered, it's shame. Right. And we know a standard must never fall to the and the enemy always wanted to destroy standard. Right. And the only people who hate standard are people who are not on your team. That's right. When the enemy comes in the flood against Israel, God will raise up a standard. Amen. They shall be defeated. Amen. Praise God. Yes. When Jesus Christ said, they said, where's Jesus? He said, I'm he. And they fell backwards. Why? Because he's saying, I'm the insignia of Israel. Let me tell you why Moses and Elijah had to come back. Moses and Elijah represents, Moses represents the dead in Christ. And could it be that Elijah represents the catch away in Christ that shall not see death? One saw death and the other never saw death. They're not coincident. God is arranging these things. Praise God. Yes. And some of us are going to see death and some won't see death. Yes. 
because of the bypass death. Mm -hmm. That's what Moses and I represent. Some see death and some don't see death. Mm -hmm. But we're both in for God. Amen. Amen. Now, we see here that God and Magog, the nation, I don't mind telling you, Canada is the sea, United States is the sea. You know, I'd love to hear the Americans talk as if their president is God and can solve the world's problem. A poor guy can't solve his own home problem, never mind the world's problem. He can't. England can't say we're up. <laughs> no. There's salvation only in one says, beside me there is no Savior. Let's stand. Right here. The last trip. God and Magog, the one sixth. That's why God left one sixth, because he wanted to come back and whip their hide for the last time. Right here. On this chart right here. They come back one more time. God and Magog to fight after a thousand years is expired. And that will be the end of it. And then comes the white throne judgment. It's now, folks, the white throne judgment. People think when they sin, they get away with it. You're wrong. What hell is, is what jail is downtown. What the big penitentiary is, is what they can fire is. And the angels are the, are the officers who put men away. But they don't see Jesus. When a sinner dies, they don't see Jesus. They do not meet him, but they don't see him. They will not see him until the great judgment seat of Christ. Guess who's going to be there? The church judging angels. I can't wait till I judge Lucifer and those filthy, nasty, dirty angels who cause all these problems huh? and cause people to be beheaded and be sh shot up and, and killed and massacred and martyred in Fox's book of martyrdom. You know who do that? Evil angels. Nasty, dirty spirits. Unclean spirits. God said, we're going to judge angels. You should be shouting right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said, we're going to judge angels. Yeah. We're going to judge angels. Yeah. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Yeah. Praise God. And by the way, church, when he comes, amen, back here, the second time, right here, second time, we're going to start that one of these days, the second coming. God spoke more about the second coming than the first coming. Yeah. There's going to be a visitor coming. And guess who's on the white stallion? Me. Right behind them. He said, why would God want you to come with him? He said, and so shall we ever be. He's coming with the army of heaven. Every Christian is in the army. Amen. We're going to judge with him. Judge angels. War with him at his appointment. Right now, we have a ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors. And he can't declare war till we're gone. Praise God. Amen. So, should I worry about Antichrist coming? No, we no won't see him. We are going to be dealing with the Antichrist spirit, mm -hmm. but never with the person. That's right. That's right. Amen. We're going to have to deal with Satan's spirit, but never the person. Mm -hmm. The world will literally have to deal with them, because when they see him, they're going to say, is this the man that causes so much what? Trouble. Trouble. The little guy. When the house was in Jamaica, rest of fire and said, their God is coming. And when he was in the car, he was so short that God would see his head. He said, oh, oh, God, God is so small. They <laughs> 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 want a big giant guy from God, but we got to see his head on the car. My God is not that small. And uh, one guy said he saw a nine-foot Jesus. My Jesus is bigger than that. My Jesus filled the heavens. Yes. And the earth. <laughs> Come on, someone. Come on, beloved. Come on. Worship God. Okay, the question on this side. Interpret today news in a lot of prophecy, archaeologically verified, scientifically sound, spiritually transforming, Register to be ready. Call. Not one person in this church came for this. 
If we're not careful, we become the Dead Sea. You hear it over and over and over. And you teach nobody, you tell nobody, and we come like Lot. We sit there and watch them go to hell and get burnt up. And then we go witness about Jesus. Why am I teaching you all this? Because I have nothing to do? You're wrong. You have an obligation to take what I gave you and go teach the world. Jesus Christ took the boy's lunch, broke it, a miracle happened, and handed it to them and said, go feed. Hello? Yeah. To whom much is given, much is required. You know the answer. You know where the gate is. You know where the well is. What are you doing with this knowledge? I'm not here to entertain you. God forbid. I'm educating you, equipping you, and the job of the ministry is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Are you involved with teaching? Are you involved in telling the world right now why Russia is doing what she's doing? Are you telling the world why Isis is behaving the way she is? Why Iraq is falling and Syria is in the news and Damascus is about to be overthrown? And why England and, 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 and Germany and all this country, you know all that. I've talked to you about it. We've got sketches out here. How many of you can sketch what's on the board? How many of you really can? How many have you ever tried? And how do you think I know it? How do you think I know? I'm going to say to you, I'd hate to be in your shoe if God would bring you before Matthew 25. I said, I was hungry. I was naked. I was in prison. And you knew all this answer. And you never mentioned Jesus. He that saveth himself shall lose. But he that loseth himself shall gain some. You may hide behind personal fear and personal shame and say, I'm not going to do it. I don't have to do it. I'm just going to, you know, wait for the rapture. I think you're in for a shock. If you don't work for God, I'm going to predict you will not make it. He's going to call you. You're a slothful, lazy servant. You are unprofitable because God created an environment for you to tell what time it is. When they didn't know what to do, when they were worried, and, and this man, Charles Slip, called Jonah. God said, wake him up. I said, why are you sleeping in time like this? And they said, throw him aboard. Mm -hmm. Throw him aboard. Huh? <clears throat> amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. When, when Daniel, amen, had a decree, when nobody could answer it, he knew the answer. He got up and he interpreted the writing on the wall. You know what it means. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. And you have an obligation to this city. You are obligated. And when I preach this to you, I take away your innocence. You will have to answer to God for every time I talk to you about this. You will not get off the hooks. Help me, God. You have been lost because of it. Because you owe it to the people. Tell them. If you're ashamed of Jesus Christ, you are ashamed of you. We get you the tools and say, here's what you do. Go tell them. Go tell them. When they tell you the secret, go tell them the house stuff. If you don't do it, God said, I'll get you for it. Because they'll die. Yes, they will. But if you look at the warning, I'll get you and the buds on your hands. And I'll put, I'll bring you before judgment this, tonight. I'm putting on record that God says, I'll judge you for what you don't do. And you should have done. I'm putting you on the word of this God. Bible that he will judge you on that day for not telling. Not teaching it. How can you sit there with a burden and know your name's going to be lost? How can you? When everybody's asking, what's it mean? Jonah is sleeping. Wake up, Jonah. They need you to pray. <laughs> the shark got a hold of him with a fish. And the fish spits him in the direction of his mission. I went to God and wake us up and push us. Hey, I'm saying myself, I told you what I know. 
It took a long time to do this, to guarantee you, to make sure you know that you're inexcusable. The bowers and pray.